Gloucestershire captain Mike Klinger struck his second successive LV County Championship 100 as his side dominated the penultimate day of their latest match with Hampshire in Bristol. Hurrah, there was a prompt start on day three with Jimmy Adams trying to eke out as many more runs as possible after he resumed his innings on 129. He was left carrying his bat on 138 after last man James Tomlinson was out in the morning's third over, his 70-minute innings ending when he edged a short ball from Craig Miles to Alex Gidman. He made only a single as Hampshire were dismissed for 274, Miles ending with career-best figures of 4 for 83. Thanks to Adams almost alone, Hampshire had done really well to make 274, having been 97 for 8 on the first day, but that still turned out to be a below-par score as Klinger and Chris Dent secured their second 100 partnership in their last two innings together, having put on 129 in a nine-wicket win over Leicestershire last week. They shouldn't have done that, but Klinger was dropped early on by Liam Dawson, normally one of the best slip catchers in the business. It was the only chance that Hampshire had for some while as Klinger and Dent got their heads down and played in an attractive manner. The pitch may have improved a little, but it was still hard to imagine how the visitors had got themselves into such a mess on the opening day. They may yet be saved in this match, but those first couple of sessions of this game meant that they were always playing catch-up. And catching the ball up was not proving that easy as these two batsmen played positively, supplying plenty of boundaries as their partnership really started to move on. Klinger was especially impressive, here welcoming Danny Briggs into the attack by thumping him back over his head for a six. The Australian had made a slightly indifferent start to this campaign until he filled his boots last week at Grace Road. The form he showed there was simply carried into this match. With him at the top of the order, the Gloucesters are already looking a much improved side from last year, even though their physio is slightly busier than the local hospital at present. Klinger matches opposite number Adams by reaching a fine 50 from 65 balls. He'd hit eight fours and that one six and had been particularly fluent against the left-arm spinner Briggs, who was already proving to be a little expensive. Klinger was seeing to that. James Vince was given a couple of overs prior to lunch as Hampshire searched in vain for the breakthrough. Adams' runs were now looking even more important as Gloucestershire was scoring freely enough, something that continued after the break as well as the partnership moved into three figures. Last season, Gloucestershire didn't have too many starts like this, but both Klinger and Dent are looking very confident right now. A flash wide of the slips took Klinger into the 60s and the stand to 119, but that's where it was ended by Tomlinson. Having changed ends, he had Dent caught behind, attempting a flashing drive 20 minutes into the afternoon session. The batsman departed for 45. If anything, his replacement, Dan Housko, batted with even more fluency. He was soon off and running with a couple of boundaries, making the most of a vacant third man to get him into double figures quickly. Speed was what it was all about for the home side. Klinger proved that by taking on Briggs again, depositing this ball into the construction site as he closed in on his second century in two innings. He got there off his 152nd delivery 40 minutes before tea with his 12th four, again off Briggs. It was an excellent innings from the Gloucestershire captain to match the monumental efforts from the Hampshire skipper on the first two days of this contest. The delight for Klinger was that this 100 was at home, his first in his adopted city of Bristol. Hampshire began this season very brightly, scoring bags of runs and claiming plenty of wickets, but things have gone against them a little in the last week. They lost to Essex from a winning position and were starting to look second best in this encounter, as both Housko and Klinger were able to bat with very few problems. You don't witness too many massive first inning scores at this ground, but these two were certainly making life look pretty comfortable as they took the total beyond 200 with just the one wicket down. Housko wasted no time at all in the 40s. He cut a short wide ball from a below par Briggs before following that up with a maximum to go to his second 50-plus score of the summer. As well as that six, he'd also hit six fours in a stay of 77 balls. His other 50 this year turned into a career-best 150, so he would have hoped that this was just the start. Alas for him, it wasn't as he was bowled by Dawson for 56 to go with his side just 46 runs adrift on 228 for two. By the end of the day, Gloucestershire found themselves ahead. 
while Klinger kept on going. He was also entertained at the non-striker's end by Alex Gidman, who blocked some deliveries but went after plenty more, as he struck three sixes in his 41-ball stay before the end of the day. Dawson was the unlucky bowler to be given the treatment, while those working on the construction site behind the bowler's arm may have a collection of balls to do something with when they return to work after the weekend. Gidman also hit three fours in his 38. Clearly he didn't want to run much, and by the end of the day he'd helped his side into the lead. Quite how they can manufacture a result from here remains to be seen. With Klinger still there on 131, Glosser should go into the final day on 284 for two, with a lead of just 10. Gidman offered some positive declarations as captain last summer. Whether Klinger will follow suit remains to be seen.